Raggedy Ann at the Carnival by Patricia Thackeray and Barbara Bodner. And it looks like this particular book belonged to Nicole Roy. <laughs> Raggedy Ann and I have never been to a carnival before, Marcella said to her daddy as she tried to take in all the sights and razzle-dazzle at once. Life is just full of the most wonderful surprises, Raggedy Ann thought happily to herself as she dangled from Marcella's hand by her loppy arm. Raggedy, Ann, Raggedy and I have decided to try the merry-go-round first, Marcella announced to her father. Daddy bought them a ticket, and the next thing they knew, they were seated upon a handsome, brightly painted pony. This is exactly the one I would have chosen for myself. Isn't it nice that Marcella and I have the same taste, mused Raggedy Ann as they rode up, down, and around to the Calliope music. Marcella and Raggedy Ann went on one thrilling ride after another. In between rides, Marcella took time out for a little nourishment, as she put it. So after the bumper car, Marcella treated herself to cotton candy and soda pop. After the loop the loop, she ate several hot dogs and three bags of popcorn. And after the whirl a gig, she had some more cotton candy and topped it off with a large slice of pizza with double cheese. Raggedy Ann was sure that Marcella had eaten far too much, and she could see a tummy ache in the future. But she kept this to herself because, as I'm sure you know, dolls never talk out loud in front of real for sure people no matter what the circumstances. Now we've gone on every ride except my favorite that I've been saving for last, Marcella announced, and they stood looking up at the great glittering Ferris wheel which towered over their heads like some magnificent jewel. They were on their way down when Marcella suddenly groaned and said, I feel kind of funny. I think I ate too much cotton candy and other stuff. Raggedy Ann noticed that Marcella did look a little green. She thought, at times it really is hard to keep from saying, from saying something. The minute Marcella reached the ground, she lifted the bar on their chair and ran right over to Daddy. And I'm sorry to tell you that she left poor Raggedy Ann behind on the seat. One by one, all the people got off, and each time they did, Raggedy Ann's chair climbed higher and higher until she found herself all the way up at the top again, where she stopped because the man had turned off the Ferris wheel for the day. Oh my goodness, Raggedy Ann exclaimed. Marcella's forgotten all about me. Well, I'm sure she'll come to her senses in a minute and come to get me. Raggedy Ann peered over the edge of the chair and saw the people going home and the lights going out all over the carnival grounds one by one. Gracious, this is more serious than I thought, she said. It looks like I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands. I certainly do not intend to spend the night way up here. And so saying, she jumped out of the chair. Raggedy Ann fell down, down, until she landed on the slanty roof of a tent and slid off it headfirst into a trash basket. I'm glad I'm stuffed with cotton, she observed. That didn't hurt me one bit. Pretty soon, Raggedy Ann heard a voice. Well, look what we have here, Frankie, the cleanup man, said. Looks like someone's tossed out their rag doll. Why, it's a shame the way some kids treat their toys. Come on then, old girl. Let's see if we can find you a home. Oh, dear, thought Raggedy Ann. He means well, I'm sure, but I already have a perfectly good home. Frankie marched them over to a nearby game booth. Inside the booth was a man with curly black hair and a bushy beard. Hey, Mario, said Frankie. Maybe you can use this nice doll. I found her in the trash can. Some spoiled kid must have thrown her away. 
Sure, I can use her, said Mario. A little sprucing up and she'll make a fine prize. She's got a nice smile. Thanks. Mario dusted Raggedy Ann off and put her up on the shelf with the other prizes. She watched while he put down, he pulled down the wooden shutters and locked up the booth for the night. As soon as the carnival toys were quite sure that Mario had gone, they all turned their heads to look at Raggedy Ann. And who, may I ask, is this? hissed a plush snake who was coiled beside her. I'm Raggedy Ann, she replied in her soft voice. The snake just stared at her with his beady yellow eyes, for he'd never seen a rag doll before. Why, she's a doll just like us, cried two plastic cupie dolls in shiny gray skirts, grass skirts who were perched on the back of a colorful paper mache donkey. But she looks all soft and floppy. Isn't she funny? I think she's sweet, said a sad, gentle voice. The voice came from a fat, plush bunny who looked miserable. Well, thank you. And what's your name? Raggedy Ann inquired. Rupert, the bunny offered shyly. Where did you come from, Raggedy Ann? Oh, pardon me, I didn't mean to pry. Oh, I'll be glad to tell you she replied, and she told them all that had happened since she came to the carnival with Marcella. Then, because they asked, she told them what it was like to live with Marcella and her doll family at home. I've been trying to get a home for years and years, sighed Rupert. I've been here longer than anybody, except maybe Grandma and, Gra and Grandpa Shaker. Grandma was a salt shaker, and Grandpa was a matching pepper shaker. Yup, said Grandma. We've been here longer, but we don't care where or when we go, so long as we go together. We're a pair, you see. Well, as I was saying, said Rupert, nobody wants to win me. I'm no prize, I guess. <laughs> Get it? No prize? But no one felt much like laughing at Rupert's sad little joke. You see... Rupert continued. Nobody wants a chartreuse plush bunny. They all want pink and white ones. Well, I think it's a beautiful color. Very unique, said Raggedy Ann. Rupert, you're special, that's what. There's not another bunny quite like you, and I'm sure some special girl or boy will think so too. Say, the snake interrupted, coiling himself up on the shelf. I think we should all get some shut-eye. Tomorrow's the last day of the carnival and the people will be arriving soon. So they all went to sleep except Raggedy Ann. She sat up all night wishing that Marcella would find her before Mario gave her away as a prize to some stranger. When Mario came to open the booth, all the toys were lined up on the shelf exactly where he had left them. As crowds of people began filing past the booth, Mario stood out in front shouting, Step right up! Four balls for a quarter! Knock down the wooden bottles and win a prize! Here you go, Sonny! A boy with long, skinny arms put down his quarter and toppled all the bottles on the first try. Great pitching, Sonny! cried Mario. Pick a prize! Any prize! The boy pointed to the green plush snake. As Mario handed him to the boy, the snake hissed happily to himself. Next, a little old couple came up to play. Let's try for the lovely salt and pepper shakers, Henry dear, said the old lady. Henry, who still had a strong right arm, knocked down the bottles on the third try and off they went with Grandma and Grandpa Shaker. Grandma and Grandpa raised their painted eyebrows in a farewell to their friends. Oh dear, thought Raggedy Ann. Hurry, Marcella, before it's too late. Then a little girl used up all four balls but failed to topple the bottles. Her mother gave her another quarter and after two throws she knocked them all down. Add a way to go, Mario shouted. How's about this genuine rag doll, he said, pointing to Raggedy Ann. I can't decide between her and that bunny rabbit, said the little girl. 
I think the rag doll is much more suitable, dear, said her mother. The bunny will clash with your bedspread. Let me choose, mother, said the little girl, chewing on her braid. Please, oh, please let her pick me, Rupert wished. Suddenly, Raggedy Ann got an idea. When no one was looking, she gave Rupert a big push. He toppled off the shelf and landed right in the little girl's arms. Well, look at that, said Mario. Looks like he chose you. He's my special bunny, said the little girl, hugging Rupert to her. As they were leaving, Rupert managed a quick as a wink ear wiggle, which Raggedy Ann took to mean thanks, and I'm sure she was right. Suddenly, Raggedy Ann saw Marcella squeezing her way through the crowd to the front of the booth. Hey, mister, Marcella said, tugging at Mario's sleeve. That's my Raggedy Ann up there. But Mario was far too busy to listen. Just get in line, little girl, he said. Everyone gets a chance to pitch for a prize. This was too much for Marcella, and she burst into tears. What's the matter, kid, said a big boy who was about to take his turn. I want my Raggedy doll, Marcella sobbed, pointing up at Raggedy Ann. Gee, kid, if it's that bad, said the boy, you can take my turn. I've played this game before. Oh, thank you, thank you, Marcella cried. She fished in her overall pocket for a quarter and laid it down on the table. Mario put four balls in front of her. Marcella took a deep breath, drew herself up, tall and threw the first ball. She only managed to knock down one bottle at the corner of the pyramid. Marcella couldn't see very clearly because her eyes were clouded with tears. She missed the second and third try completely. She had only one ball left. Pull yourself together, Marcella told herself. This may be the most important moment of your life. She threw the last remaining ball at the bottles as hard as she could. The ball whizzed high over the bottles, over the shelf where Raggedy Ann sat. It bounced off the back wall of the booth and right into Raggedy Ann. Raggedy Ann was knocked off the shelf and onto the bottles. Crash! The pyramid of bottles fell, each and every one. Well, said Mario, I never saw the game played quite that way before. But I guess you can pick a prize. How's about this rag doll? She seems to bring you luck. Mario handed Raggedy Ann to Marcella, who gave her a tight hug and said, Oh, Raggedy Ann, I'm so glad I found you. Then Marcella ran through the crowd to show her daddy. Well, you're a very lucky young lady, said daddy. I think you owe Raggedy Ann an apology. I'm sorry, Raggedy Ann, said Marcella. You should be very angry with me. But Raggedy Ann wasn't angry, not a bit. I've had quite an adventure, she thought. I've been behind the scenes at a real, for sure, carnival. The end. Thanks for listening, everyone, and don't forget to check out my Patreon. Bye!